So I want to talk a little bit about uh, alternative investing, private equity specifically. You have a good uh, memory. Mainly because yeah. we're seeing a lot of, you know, definitely yeah. with these uncertain You have a good times, memory. So Trump, uh, I, was, I read you know, he's a value-added investor. You see that um, there's going to be uh, several, uh, I think it's almost double, uh, trillions Trump of dollars that, added you know, to the private equity by 2027. Queens, 2027. His father owned a so lot huge of amount of money, a lot of family offices are And he wanted the glory of going into Manhattan, and he did. And institutional, actually, in regards to deploying capital in that direction. So he's a perfect example of the second gen, the next gen margin of their trying portfolio to see, are in you know, private equity the, and so forth. Um, I wanted to get your gen. perspective when you are working with your relationships and network, you know, off market opportunities. Um, what are you seeing as regards to the opportunities, um, you know, pivoting away from the VC to the private equity, something a little bit more sustainable and, and good, you know, internal rate of return? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, it's interesting. I, when you look at privates as a whole, when you look at venture or private equity, you have a lot of smart people who are over allocated into this for a reason. When you look at the stock market, that's like a 60-40 rule that has been invented by the brokerages over the past 50 years to keep you invested into your 401k. And that really mainstream advice doesn't really work for um, anyone with over $10 million in assets after a certain point. And what you're seeing is that the Yale Endowment, for example, has 86% of their um, assets invested into private equity or venture. Harvard not a slouch either, around 77%. So what does that really tell you about the smart money? And you can bet that those companies that they've invested into, much like ours, because we've co-invested with some of them, don't are, are much more higher barrier to entry, right? Like life sciences, or maybe something with AI with a very, very, you know, huge lead investor and a big contract with, you know, sports teams, which is something that we've, we've involved with. So to us, it's, you know, the private is where the real wealth creation is. It always has been. Um, if you look at real estate, for example, commercial real estate, it's always gone up mostly, you know, except for when interest rates have gone up, as we're seeing now. But it's, but it's something that is not to the whims or does, ha does not have the same risk profile as owning a bucket of common stocks that can be written down to zero by a bankruptcy judge at any given point because there was a run on your bank. Does that make sense? So these people want to get in early where they can control the terms and price, which is where the real wealth creation is, rather than not having control um, after the company goes public. Because there's a false sense of control with people when they say, I own stocks, is that they can sell any time. Yeah, they can sell at a loss. But I also control the terms that I get into with one of these companies, and if I want more options or warrants or something like that, I can ask that. And a, and a great example of this is like what happened in 2003 with Martha Stewart. She, you know, she had a fan base of, of women that owned her stock, and it was almost like they had bought that stock purposely because they wanted to be a part of her, and it was like, to her, they saw her as a store of value until she went to jail. Then the stock went down. What control did they have over that? None. Did they have old Martha's cell phone to call and complain about the stock price dropping of their 200 shares that they own? No, not at all. So you gotta look at it, you know, the, the, the middle class is, has that still like that scarcity mindset. Whereas when you look at the, so do you the, feel the, like, you know, the people um, who I deal with, they want to know not only what the risk is, but what are the terms, the how are we right controlling now, this, what happens if everything goes bad, how do we insulate ourselves PE, from the risk? Um,